Hey everybody, my name's Carrie. Thank you so much for joining me. Today is December 30th, 2021. We're almost done with the year. Uh, Christmas is over, Christmas vacation is pretty much over, and looking forward to New Year. Um, we've got snow here in the Northern Oregon area. I'm, I'm just outside of Portland. Uh, not a ton, but enough to make everything white and beautiful, which gives me a lot better light. The last time I recorded, my lighting sucked. It was super dark outside, so I turned on the interior lights, and it just was not good lighting. So hopefully today looks a little bit better. Um, I love it when it snows. It's been really nice. It's been around since about Christmas. So uh, today is warming up and I think a lot of it will melt. We only have a few inches. They were predicting quite a bit, but we only got a few inches. Um, it did cut our Christmas vacation short. As I mentioned in the last episode, uh, myself and my family, we go to the coast at, on the Oregon coast for Christmas. And we were scheduled to stay until the day after Christmas, but we knew that this snowstorm was coming in. And we has we waited. We waited till the last minute because, you know, the weather reporters are wrong a lot. And it was looking like it was really going to come in. And so we decided to head home on Christmas Day, which would have been a day early. And we're really glad we did because um, a couple of hours after we got over the Coast Range Mountains, uh, they shut down the highways <laughs> because it started to come in, got really slick and icy. People were sliding off the road. So we were really thankful that we listened to our gut and came home early. Uh, we continued our vacation. Uh, we, we came home unpacked and then Jim and I went over to my son's house so we could still continue. I made the dinner I was going to make anyway. We watched a movie and kind of extended it as long as we possibly could. <laughs> So um, it was really, really a good time, really nice and relaxing. We watched movies and played games and just enjoyed being around each other, which, was, which is what it's all about. So I hope your holiday, whatever you celebrate, was good for you. Um, uh, are you doing anything for New Year's? We're not even going to probably stay up till midnight. <laughs> we haven't really for a long time. Uh, the fact that it is kind of dicey weather-wise and road road wise things are still a little bit icy don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of days and just with the whole COVID thing happening we just aren't going to be getting around together with anybody and we stay home and it's going to be fine I don't need to whoop it up <laughs> tomorrow or the next day is just another day so anyway that's my plan my plan to do nothing actually can't say nothing nothing I am going to be joining the fiber hustle guys for their new year's eve bingo so that will be happening um, Friday afternoon, which I look forward to. I just like to join in and play. I don't, I don't necessarily do it for the prizes or anything. I don't even know if there's going to be prizes, but I like to just do it just for the gathering of all the people. And they're great guys. Um, so, you know, I came home and I took advantage of the fact that I kind of had that extra day that we were supposed to be coming home. And I thought, you know what? Today I'm not doing anything. There's a whole bunch of prep that leads up to Christmas. And then, you know, then even just, even though you're you're hanging around and watching movies and whatever, it's still like some work. It's not, it's relaxing, but in a different way. And so I just took the day and did nothing, which was wonderful. And then the next day I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get back to, you know, doing stuff in here, getting my projects in order, cleaned this up, cause this was kind of like, gift making central here and kind of got everything organized christmas put away and i started back on the kaleidoscope quilt so i will be sharing a little bit about how far i've gotten it's going to be one of those tedious quilts that just take a while because you're making so many of the same thing so like right now i'm sewing 200 half square triangles to a square and it's like okay so it's just on repeat it's been really fine because i just put some a movie or a podcast on while I'm sewing and watching the quilt stream which is Chip's channel that he does um, and he talks about different sewing projects and quilting projects and just kind of put that in and um, 
and sew away. <laughs> so like I mentioned, one of the things I was starting to get back to sewing was this quilt, this, the Kaleidoscope Quilt by Lori Holt. And I managed to get all of these, let's see, this, see the square with the little triangles around it? That's a, called a churn dash block. It's a very traditional old block and I've gotten all of mine done in all the different fabrics. So all my churn dash blocks are done. I am now working on what is the, the next kind of border around that. And then I'll do that and just, you know, little by little, but it really helps to have something that I'm listening to in my earbuds and just kind of sewing and I'm running out of things to watch though because I've watched pretty much everything that I've wanted to watch like on Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and you know all those streaming services I even was watching a Disney movie the other day oh I did start got my spinning wheel going again I haven't spun in months and I've been wanting to I still have some some yarn on the spindle that I'm still working on. So I got back to it and sat and watched a Disney movie and spun for a little bit. So it's been really nice and really relaxing. Um, okay, so, oh, my sweater that I'm wearing. This I actually finally finished. Now I started this last New Year's and got it pretty much done into like springish. And then I just moved on to something else because then it was too warm to wear it. It's almost a little warm to wear it. It's a worsted weight sweater. It is the Bright Note Sweater by Janine McCarty. And it's got, um, the pattern calls for like colored bobbles towards the bottom and on the sleeve. I didn't bobble it. Let me see. I just did dashes and you can see on the sleeve, I just did that's what's on the bottom um i'm not the pattern's great and was easy i'm not super thrilled with how it fits me um i had as you notice i don't have much of a neckband that's where i stopped was at the neckband like i was almost done and then i stopped i know it doesn't surprise some of you it doesn't really surprise me either but i thought you know what get this done early in the winter so I have time to wear it this year um, so I did the collar which called for a ribbed collar for an inch I did that and it was so tight it was like <laughs> uh, no I, I don't want that I don't I won't wear that so I ripped that out and I just did like two or three rows of rib just to give it a finished edge and I like that much better um, when I was making it I had done a sleeve and tried it on and I felt like the sleeve was too tight so I took the sleeve out. I think I picked up a few more stitches, you know, where you pick up for the sleeve and I used a bigger needle size. And so I did that for the sleeve, which fits better. I still feel like it fits, feels weird right where the seam is. And I blocked it and really kind of pulled it and pinned it. And it's okay. I only have like a tank underneath so that I don't have anything with sleeves on. If I had something with sleeves on, it would really bother me. Um, one thing that I think I'm going to have to take out and change is this is too loose for me. It's like that's too, <laughs> that's too baggy. Um, so I'm going to probably take this out. I don't want to take it back because I've got color work and I really don't want to redo the color work. So I think what I might do is pick up and decrease a few stitches and maybe go down even another size in my needle size to try and tighten that up because that that will drive me crazy. That's gonna catch on anything I grab for something that's gonna catch. So I don't care for that. And it's I'm sure it's it's me and I did do gauge swatch with this. I think it fits fine. Um, it's supposed to have like 10 inches of positive ease, which I guess it does. I guess I just don't realize what 10 inches of positive ease looks like. I wanted it to be like this big oversized sweatshirt and I have lost weight since I started making it so it even fits even better but um, I think I just need to wear it. Maybe I just need to wear it and kind of let my body stretch it out. <laughs> so that is my Bright Note sweater. I am happy with it. It is not the fault of the pattern. It's just um, some tweaks I need to make on my own. 
So I uh, finished that. I'm really trying to get things finished. I know I say this at the end of every year because I look at the new year and go, oh, I'm going to start like all these new things. It doesn't always happen. And I'm okay with that. Um, because <laughs> I ended up casting on a new project. I've got a new pair of socks going, you know, all that stuff. Um, I did have been working on crocheting my granny squares. Um, these are made mostly from the minis that I get from Michelle as an advent calendar. And so I just throw them in this box and I've got quite a few now. So I thought I might start putting them together. I think I counted over 50 ish. I think is what I have. I ha I did fall behind, which I talked about before, but I have been trying to catch up. I think I only have like maybe four or five skein or little minis to crochet up for this year's advent. Um, it's a lot of fun because you get yarn that you don't have in your stash and it's just, it's just fun. So I was trying to figure out what color am I gonna use to connect them all. And, um, you know, I, I thought, do I do like a black? And I thought the thought of working with black is like, no, I don't know that I really want cream, but I want something that's going to set off all these colors because I have so many different colors and I think I'm going to do a gray. Um, so I will dye some yarn. I've got see that cone right there. I'm going to skein up some yarn and dye it and do sort of just a medium gray. Um, and because gray is a really good neutral for making colors pop and then that way it'll go with any color. I even thought of maybe going more like a navy blue, but then I was afraid that that might clash with some of the colors. So I think I think I'm gray is going to be what I need. Now, I don't know how big this blanket's going to end up and I don't know how much yarn I need for, for sewing it together or connecting all the blocks. So I will connect all the blocks, probably do a border. Um, I think I figured, I measured these out. They are measuring closer to five inches. So I thought, well, if I did 10 across, that's 50 inches plus you figure, what, at least a half an inch, maybe more in between each block, which would make it bigger. That would make a pretty good size blanket. Um, by however long it gets. So I don't know how to tell how much, because I know crochet eats up more yarn, but I don't know how much to figure since I'm dyeing it myself. Any suggestions? <laughs> like is two skeins worth, like 200 grams of fingering enough? Do I do 300 grams? I don't know how to figure it. I will definitely write down how much I use. So that if I did need to dye more, I could, but I'm trying to, to just make it all at the same time. Um, speaking of, no, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> so anyway, that's the crochet blanket that I'm working on. I'm just doing a solid granny square. Um, some of these are yarns from leftovers of stuff that I've done. Um, so they're all different colors. Because it was just Christmas, I was gifted some lovely gifts and some of those some of that was yarn one of the things i got was from my friend leslie and she got me this sock yarn this is from two sisters and it is technicolor sky is the colorway and look how fun those knitted up as i love these so much so i did knit this on my knitting machine as a tube hand knit the heels, toes, and cuffs, and I love it. So I've got the second one I'm working on, I think the heel right now on the second one. So that will be done pretty soon. But that was a fun, fun uh, yarn. Um, speaking of sock knitting, hang on, let me move that, there we go. Um, I did knit up another sock tube and I thought you know what let me just film a little something to show how I do that on my flatbed knitting machine and I did post this on Instagram I even made a TikTok it was my first TikTok <laughs> so I mean whatever I'm just playing but I um, knitted up this sock tube so this is yarn that I got from my friend Lori for my birthday and I had started hand knitting because my knitting machine was on the fritz talked about that before 
So this yarn is from Rock and String Creations. The colorway is the Royals. So I had gotten almost to the point of, of the heel and I just was not going back to it because it just is not something I enjoy knitting by hand anymore. And so then once Jim fixed my machine, I thought, you know what? I'm probably never going to finish those socks because I have to hand do them. So I unraveled them, re put that into a, a cake and knit them on my machine. So now I'm going to be able to use it. But I, it, I showed in the video making this sock tube. Something that I've tried differently, which um, I'm hoping works, is when I can't see it too much because I did pretty good but can you see that hole right there I get these holes where I pick up for the heel on both sides and so when I'm picking up I'm trying to like get the stitch below and I've tried different things and then I end up just kind of sewing it shut when I'm tidying up those ends that are in there so what I thought I would do um, is when I'm ready to I knit so many rows I'm doing it toe up on my knitting machine when I get to the amount of rows for my foot I'm gonna put the row in for the heel I'm hand manipulating the stitches with contrasting yarn and putting in like this is where my heel will go I found that that makes it a lot easier to pick up the stitches on either side of that because I can follow that pretty easily what I'm trying on this sock and I, I'll wait till I get my other ones finished before I start this is I didn't put this waist yarn all the way to the end. I went in a couple stitches on both sides, then put the waist yarn in. But when I pick up, I will pick up those two stitches and the ones on the waist yarn. And hopefully that will make a difference. I've only done one because if it doesn't work, I don't want to do it on the other one. Um, I'm hoping that that helps by not having those end two stitches open you know like taken off of the needle so we'll see how that goes I will for sure let you know so anyway I did really condense it down to like a 30 second video on Instagram and stuff but if you're interested I have a, a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and I'll put it at the end of this video it's about five minutes long it may be too detailed I don't know but if you're interested in what goes into doing a sock tube on a flatbed machine using a ribber it'll be at the end of this video so that's that um, I did finish my striped where's Waldo hat <laughs> uh, many of you said finish it finish it finish it so I did put a little white pom-pom um, it's too big around here it, and the weight of this wants to pull it off my head. I did wear it a little bit. Um, it, the weather was pretty bad at the coast because this big snowstorm was pushing in. We were getting a lot of wind and hail and so I didn't go out for a very long walk. <laughs> just did a real short one and nobody was out so nobody even got to see my cute hat. But I did wear it um, and you know I'm glad that I made it but I think I'm gonna do a fingering weight hat, the same style with a cap. And I thought it doesn't have to be Christmas colors. It could just be kind of a, just that style of hat. And I thought of trying to do it on my knitting machine because it is knitting in the round. I just don't know about doing the decreases because you're knitting it in the round. The space that the knitting is going through is real tight and if I, I can do a knit two together by moving a stitch over, but then I have to move all of the stitches over to that. And if I drop a stitch, I can't pick it up because it's gone down in between. So I may have to just do it by hand, which would be fine because it could be one of those mindless knits that you're just knitting in the round. And I did find this pattern. It is called the Nisaloo. Uh, it's by Skander Knits. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it, but it is a free pattern, which is nice, and it's fingering weight. So it's the style that I'm talking about, just the cap that goes to a point, and I thought, okay, I have had this yarn in my stash since Vogue Knitting Live, was it 2018, 2017? When was it? Whenever it was in Seattle last, before the world fell apart. 
And those, those of you that have been around a while may remember this yarn that I bought and shouldn't have, <laughs> but now I have it. Um, it was a very nice dyer. She was super excited about being at Vogue Knitting. She was just very energetic. I wanted to support, to support her. And this was the only thing that, that was really in there that I thought I might use. Um, it is a gradient. So I'm not sure how the gradient goes because now it's been a few years and I can't remember. But as you can see, you've got this pink, gray, and white, and somehow it fades from one thing to the next. The only problem is that I don't like this color pink. <laughs> it's um, a very yellow pink. It's almost coral, and I don't care for it. And it is a hefty skein. It's 500 yards. So I thought this could be really good for that hat. That hat calls for like... 547 for the small. I would probably make the medium. And I thought, well, she shows it as this wide ribbing folded. I probably won't do the folded because I don't care for that for myself. So that would save some yardage. I even thought I could knit the ribbing in a solid, like an undyed or something like that. But I need to over dye this because I don't like this pink. I will never make anything out of it. Um, it is a merino cashmere nylon blend and so it's really nice I think it would feel really nice as a hat and being that it has such a long um, It's so long. It's got so much yardage. I think it would look really cool in that hat. So I'm gonna attempt to over dye this I talked with Jim my color expert and I said I was thinking of either over dyeing with a blue or with a purple and I think we've decided that purple would be good and just just ever so slightly, which will tone this down, make it a little more purpley. Everything will just be a little more purpley. You won't have the white, it'll be like a light purple. The gray probably won't change a whole lot because it's already pretty dark. Um, but I figure I'm gonna give it a try. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just throw black over it and make it a dark gray and you'll just have a very slight gradation. So I don't think I can ruin it, fingers crossed. <laughs> It will be an experiment. So I think sometime this weekend I might try that and I will keep you posted on what happens with it because um, it's it's going to be interesting because this is such an odd pink for me. I don't know why I bought it. I knew I shouldn't have bought it once I did and it was really expensive because I didn't realize what the cost was. Because it's such a big skein, it's um, 150 grams and the MCN, and it's out of show. But you know what? I made that dyer happy, and I'm going to end up using it. So that makes me happy. So stay tuned. See what happens. Um, I am making progress on my so faded sweater. I haven't shown that in a little while. I had stopped working on it because I was finishing up my Christmas makes. Oh, speaking of Christmas makes, I did finish everything and gift everything to my co-workers and I did do my little montage of those makes and I guess I'll just stick that in here. Hi, I'm going to show you the uh, Christmas gifts that I made that I'm going to be giving to my co-workers and this is kind of the end of all my Christmas makes and we're going to do our exchange uh, in a few days so I need to get them wrapped and I wanted to show you record this so that I could show you before I wrap them. So they're in no particular order they're just whatever's on top of the pile. <laughs> um, the first thing I made is for one of my co-workers who has had a like a, a bag that she carried her lunch and stuff like that in and I don't remember what the bag looked like but she said it was like her favorite bag for whatever reason it worked really well and I thought and so I thought I well, I, I can make her a new bag now I don't know what the original was so hopefully this can take its place but I made her like a little tote bag so what I did is so it's pink on that side blue on the other I um, if you've watched for a while you know I made this um, quilt fresh as a daisy by pen and paper designs and so I took the directions and the you know the construction for making one of the flowers and cut into my ice dyed fabrics that I had and just use those as my side panels so it's just a beige background um, 
I, I'm afraid I may have made the, the handles too long. I thought about it just being able to fling over her shoulder, so I wanted to make them long enough for that. So if by chance they're too long, I can deconstruct it. I mean, it would be a job, but I could deconstruct it to the point of making the, the straps a little shorter if I need to. Then I put a snap so that she can snap it closed. I've got some pockets in here. Let's show it this way. See, I got some pockets. It's the same fabric on the inside as the outside. And I hope this takes the place of the bag that she, she either lost or something happened to it. I can't even really remember. I kind of caught the edge of the conversation. So hopefully that's gonna be okay. Another bag that I made is for another coworker, and um, she carries a bag that she's got her water bottle, and I don't know what she's got in there. I mean, is, it may be a purse. I'm not sure. So I, for some reason, thought, well, she needs another bag. <laughs> Why not? So I made the uh, India Hobo bag, and this is a pattern I got online from Swoon Sewing Fabrics or Sewing Patterns. And it is just like an over the crossbody type of sack sort of bag. So I found this fabric on uh, at Joann's and it has a pocket on the outside. It is fully re reversible. So, um, oh, this fabric, it's, it's like all be kind of themed. It's like be happy and you know, all these like wonderful things. So the inside or the outside, I don't know how she, I don't even know if she'll use it, but if she does, she can flip it around and it's be themed on the inside as well with a pocket. So either way, there's a pocket on the outside and then the outside pocket becomes the inside pocket. Um, there you go. So I, it was a PDF downloadable pattern and um, the pattern pieces didn't give you directions. Like if you have directional fabrics, which both of these fabrics were directional. And so I'm like, was being, had to be very um, aware of cutting so that everything ended up going the right way. And so I had to, fold the fabric and do weird things to get it to work. It took a yard of each of the fabric, of each of the fabrics, and I used all of it. And some of the pieces, like for these, for these um, straps and stuff, just the way the construction is, they're kind of an odd shape. And there wasn't a like, this goes up, this goes down, and I didn't even think about it. And I cut it all out, I started putting it together, and I thought, oh, wait a minute, I wonder what direction that piece goes because it's kind of a weird shape. And I had this panic moment of, oh my God, did I cut it upside down because <laughs> it doesn't say. Thankfully, and it was purely luck, everything went the right way. I've now marked it on my pattern, like this is the upside, just in case I do use, do make it again and use um, directional fabric. So it just uses an interfacing, an iron-on interfacing. It's not padded or anything, but it's nice and sturdy. So hopefully that's going to be usable for her. Um, another thing I made, and I talked about this in the postcard tutorial that I did, is I made some postcards to give as a gift with blank on the back side. I've already stamped them. And um, so, and I'm going to give her a pen so that she can just um, write a note and send a little fabric postcard to somebody. So um, pretty simple and um, I'm hoping she likes that. That's kind of a unique gift to give. So I'm gonna give her a micron pen to write on them and um, I don't know, hopefully she can use those. Another thing I made, I made a couple of table runners, table topper kind of things is I made this one. This is, um, that block is an Ohio star. And I was thinking winter themed because by the, you know, you give this right before Christmas, obviously you're not gonna use it for Christmas, but I thought winter themed. I don't know what her color scheme is in her house. And I don't know what size table. So it's, I've kept it fairly small. Um, and then quilted it. I'm not sure what you're seeing because it's white but um, 
I think that turned out pretty neat. Let's see the back side. So, made the cute table runner. And then lastly, I um, made something using So Kind of Wonderful's pattern and ruler. And So Kind of Wonderful makes a lot of patterns. They have a ruler that cuts curves and a whole, a whole I want to say system, but a way of putting things together, which is so ingenious and unique that you can do this these curved pieced quilts and blocks that are pretty fairly simple. I mean, they're fairly simple. You just got to follow the directions, and once you kind of understand how the ruler works, it works pretty good. So this is a free pattern on their website. I've been wanting to make this for years since they first put it up, and I just never did. And I thought, well, this makes a really big block. It's about a 20 inch block. And the idea that they show, let's see if there's a picture of it. No, not on here. But she's put three of these blocks together to make a table runner. And I thought, well, that actually makes a pretty big table runner. And, you know, like I said before, not knowing people's table size, you don't want to give them something that's not going to fit. So I thought, what if I just made one block? and let it be just like a table topper thing. You put a candle or candy dish or something on top of it. So that's what I decided to do. This is the ruler and so this is where you cut right in here and then she gives you instructions on how to square things up and all that kind of stuff. So I made this and I did it in the same colors as the pattern. I just thought it looked really cool and I know the person I'm giving it to, this is kind of in her color scheme. So um, I just made the one block and quilted it on my long arm, did like a feather design here, pebbles here, straight lines in the gray, did, repeated that on all those different colors and she will have a little table topper and it's pretty cool on the back side because the thread kind of makes the design. So um, yeah, little table, table topper, little table square, <laughs> whatever. Um, so that is like about a 20 inch square and I, th I do know what her table is, which is a decent size. And I think she can put that just in the middle and I, wh whatever she can do, whatever she wants with it. So, um, those are the makes for my coworkers and I'm excited to give those to them. Who knows what I'll make next. <laughs> So everybody seemed to like what they what I gave them. I did realize once I was editing both this montage and the one before I keep saying I hope they like it. And that comes from I know I like it and I know I would like it if I was gifted that, but that doesn't mean the person you're giving whatever you make um, will like it. And it's like when do you become that old lady that makes the fun little Oh, bless your heart. Look what grandma or auntie gave me. You know, that kind of a thing. How do you know you haven't gone there? I think what I make is, is nice. I enjoy making it. I think it's cool, but you don't really know, especially if the person's like, oh, great, I really love this. How many times have you said that when you don't really love it? So how do I know the person I've given it to is really loving it? So it makes me a little insecure. I still will make things for people because I do enjoy it. And I hope and I think everybody enjoys what I make them. But you know what I mean? Where it's just like, oh, look. You see it in the movies all the time. We're like, oh, look what Aunt so-and-so made me. I don't want to be that person. I hope somebody would tell me if I've become that person and to stop making things for them. <laughs> because I don't want to be that person. Oh, anyway. Um... I did do a new cast on. I like to start something new when I go away on vacation. I don't know why, but I just do. It's just fun. I've talked about this before. Um, and I decided to make the collective shawl wrap scarf. It's kind of an um, it's kind of a scarf kind of thing, which is fine. I think this will be easy to wear. It's a Hohi Locatelli pattern, fairly new, came out just before Christmas. And I'm making it with yarn I've been given. So I don't have the ball band for this. And I wish I did and I can't find it because I was gonna make this into something else and then didn't. But this is yarn that Michelle from the Naughty Knitwits gave me um, last year, I think. And it is from Barnyard Knits. 
and it is the prickly pear colorway but it's in like a heavenly base or something like that 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 kim at barnyard knits doesn't even have on her website so it's like alpaca and silk and all kinds of soft wonderfulness that i knew i couldn't make into anything that needed structure because it's too it'll be too drapey so i thought okay this would be perfect to go with the mini set that Lori gave me for Christmas this year with these colors. So I've already gotten into a few of them and I'll show you the shawl in a little bit. So I thought that looks pretty nice, right? And it's turning out really well. Um, it's a little bit of brioche, just enough. It doesn't end up getting super wide so you're not knitting, you know, what the same thing for a huge amount of stitches but here it is so far so I've got this color here and then this more of a burgundy plum color here I just finished with this brioche and so it's like half and half so it looks the same on both sides and then this is just garter stitch with a single strand of this color so now I'll do another garter garter stitch section and then um, these three colors are what I have next and th these two are very similar so I'll probably do that so it splits them up and it's very soft brioche is squishy anyway and then you've got this delightful heavenly yarn and this yarn oh this yarn is from a Nanette Wake mini skein set called Lila and it's very soft as well so these are very it's just going to be very nice and I I will I think I will see myself wearing this just not with the sweater because <laughs> it's a little warm my heater keeps going on because it's cold outside and it's cooking me out here so this I actually was doing this over Christmas vacation it takes some concentration doing the you know the brioche part but then you're only doing it for that much and then you go to garter and you give your brain a break but I was pretty proud that I was able to do this while having a conversation and all that kind of stuff so that's my Christmas cast on and will carry me through a little bit longer um, I won't do a New Year's cast on because I need to finish these things so um, that is that so when I look ahead to the new year and I think, okay, what's my new year going to look like? I don't set resolutions. Don't really set a goal. I just kind of like, you know what, next year I think I want to try this. I'm always wanting to try something different. And I've had an interest in learning more about how to do things with alcohol inks. And um, so I've started watching some YouTube videos of like, what you can do with it so I have some ideas and so I'm kind of dabbling in that I don't I don't have any of the supplies other than alcohol because you use rubbing alcohol to spread the ink and make a picture <laughs> or something like I said I'm newly just starting to think about it but I think that might be something I'm going to explore next year um we'll see I also want to try doing something with resin never done anything with that either the problem is is to do anything like that then you need all the supplies and then it's like where are you going to put all the supplies and what craft are you going to give up to have room for that so i go back to that whole thing but i think i'm going to try it i'll just i'll try and start small i'm the type that dives in with both feet get everything so that i have everything <laughs> and do it decide whether or not i like it so that's kind of my goal um for a goal, I guess, or just as something I'm looking forward to doing next year. Um, I don't have anything else for you, so I do appreciate you being here. Like I said, the sock uh, knitting on the knitting machine is at the end of this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm sorry it's been a little sporadic this year. I hope to be better next year. I hope you have a safe New Year's. Please be safe. Please keep your gatherings small so that we can get through this pandemic. It's dragging on way too long. Um, and all of us, I know, would like things to go back to normal. So follow what everybody says. 
to do to keep yourself safe and hopefully next year will be better and we'll kick this thing in the butt. So happy new year. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next year. I wanted to give a demonstration on how I knit sock tubes on my flatbed knitting machine. Uh, this is my brother. The top bed, the main bed is a KH860 and the ribber is a KR850. Both of them are brother. Has to be or it won't go together. So this flatbed machine can knit flat pieces. Like if you wanted to knit a sweater in, in pieces, the front, the back, the sleeves, it's all separate, you would just use this. This is an attachment that I got separately that attaches to it and it is a ribber so it can knit rib. You can set it to like knit two purl two on, a, on the flat. You can also set it to knit in a circle and that's what I use it mainly for. And um, what it does is, is you have your carriage that goes across the bed, engages the needles, and I, with a couple buttons that I push, make it so that it knits only on the back uh, bottom going this way and only on the top this way. And so it's just knitting in a loop, which is giving you a tube. So I knit 64 stitch uh, socks. So I've got 32 stitches on the top engaged and 32 stitches on the bottom engaged, gives me 64. This is a row counter. So as the carriage passes over, it flicks this little lever and counts how many rows you do. So it counts each way, so it's one, two, but in a tube that's really one. So I've, with trial and error, have figured out how many rounds it takes for me to get the size sock that I need. And I've written that down so I don't forget. You also use this um, cast on comb, which you attach to the knitting to give weight. So as I'm knitting, the knitting is going to go down in between these two beds. This will be up underneath there to pull the knitting down. I will add a weight. This is like a two pound or three pound weight. And I just add, uh, attach it to the comb to add more weight to pull it down. If you don't have the weight to pull the knitting down, it's just loose and it comes off the needle. So it's very important to weigh it down. Um, and then I also use regular old chip clips to hold the yarn when I get started or start a new end. I've got waste yarn. Um, I will start that. I have figured out my toes or my socks to go toe up, start at the toes, go to the cuff, and this will cast it on kind of like a provisional cast on. Once I've made the tube, I will then pick up the stitches with my regular knitting needles and hand knit the toes, the heel, and the cuff. So this gives me a provisional cast on uh, to start with, this is the yarn I'm going to be knitting the socks with. It's a self-striping yarn by Rock and Strings. And that's about it. So I'm gonna just basically get started. So I will start with my, my uh, waist yarn. Just let it fall between the beds. And I get it threaded into the carriage. Take one of my fancy chip clips to hold it and knit across. So now I've got my first uh, cast on edge. This is called a zigzag because it's caught on every needle in a zigzag form. I then take my cast on comb and it's got this little teeny rod that fits in, in the holes on the end here and that holds the knitting onto the comb. So I will slip this under in between the stitches and slip this little holding pin in there. There, now I've got weight pulling down on the yarn. Put my other weight on there. So now I'm gonna set it so that it knits to the right on the top and to the left on the bottom. And I do that by pushing the part button and the part button. So, it's a little rough at first because you're knitting over that comb and then it goes pretty easy. Okay, so I've got a little bit of knitting with my waist yarn. I will then cut it and I will start knitting now with my 
main yarn. Okay, what I like to do is I just take my waist yarn and my working yarn and I'll just tie them together and then I'll use my chip clip to hold it so I get that fed in between. This gets a little tricky because you've got that weight hanging down. Okay, so I'm going to use my chip clip to hold both strands. I'm going to set my counter to zero. That's it. Now what I do is I take off my weights and you can see the knitting has been happening underneath. I set my carriage to knit both, uh, that will knit both sides at the same time with no yarn in it and the knitting will just come right off. And you have a sock tube. There's the line of stitching where my heel's gonna go.